Welcome again to Let's Play Armored Warfare with Misashi. Today we're looking at the PT-76. Thing looks like a Ferrari. The PT-76 really makes you admire the industrial design uh, compared to the other tier one, the M113. This thing just looks slick as I'll get out. It's famous for its um, amphibious qualities, but just looking at it in the garage, it just looks elegant and fast and low slung it's ferrari like but as anyone who's played the pt76 in game knows that's laughable this thing is a beached whale it cannot turn it's pretty slow it's it makes the m113 look like a rocket ship i mean this thing is just not nimble at all but I love what Obsidian's done, though. They've got a uh, really fast AFV with the M113, and then you've got this much slower but heavy-hitting, very nice gun on this in comparison to the M113. So you have two very distinct play styles at Tier 1, and I, I think that's just brilliant. I, I love the contrast of the two of them. But all I really care about with the PT-76 is can it swim? Can it actually swim in the game unlike other tanks? But before I get all that, we will look at some of the details of the tank, at least a little bit, not much, because the PT-76 is so cool because it can swim so well. And I was kind of hoping it was modeled in the game. I, I heard it wasn't, but I still needed to find out for myself. But let's look at some of the details first for this tank. I'm always interested, since the game gives us the type of armor material, it shows steel here. It's actually homogeneous cold rolled welded steel often called just RHA for rolled homogeneous armor uh, I got bored and looked all that up and really spent a lot of time reading about it it's pretty interesting stuff if you get real bored yourself feel free to look up RHA armor I'm actually not going to go over the other stats uh, or the, the ammo types and the, all the other things here uh, just because the whole fun to the PT-76 is the fact it can swim. So all I really cared about in game terms was, could it swim? And so I'll skip her over all this. You'll, you'll get lots of armor analysis and looking at the different modules on all the other vehicles. But on this one, I just want to know if it can swim. So let's get to the point. Well, based on this old Russian footage from the late 50s, looks like it can swim. Oh yeah, look at that. There we go. Pretty soon, uh, there's the side vents. Also, you can see the back vents where the hydrojet comes out there, those holes. Here's some good propaganda. Watch these two guys here. The, the tank, the PT-76 is about to roll over. Look at this. Would you want to volunteer for this job? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know who signed those guys up for that shot. Okay, see the water coming out of there? That's where the hydrojet operates at so the back of the... PT-76. This thing can do about 10 kilometers per hour in the water, which is really fast. It's a very unique system that pushes water here. They're showing the diagram of it here. Those blue parts are the hydrojet. So water enters there, and then it gets pushed out and provides the propulsion. There's also a couple of bil bilge pumps that uh, that are operating this. And then see, there's you can see the water's coming out through there, and once it gets submerged, that force will allow the PT-76 to swim like nobody's business. It's also showing the side here. That side part is uh, another thing that allows it to turn left and right and even go backwards. It's super smart how they designed this thing. And here's the way to really cross the water when one of these things not riding inside of it. What if it really sank, sank? Oh, this is good. This is something they probably didn't do very often. Yeah. You know, the driver was a little worried. Look at this thing. It's amazing. Okay, that's the front part. That's the... Like the, the N113 has a, a piece that pulls down in the front. Uh, they also have it here. That allows it to ride the waves better. And they have a periscope, you see. A special built periscope. Just to see above that thing. See? That thing is more ship than tank. It's just awesome in the water. Not so awesome on the land. So let's see if that's how it holds up in the game. The beached whale syndrome. 
A lot of people don't like the PT-76 in the game because it's just so unwieldy. It just turns like a beached whale. Uh, it's got a good gun, but it has no gun depression. So, you know, you have to you have to keep on rises and you're, you get surrounded at this tier by the M113s and they can get around you real quick. And it's got some serious problems in terms of uh, its gameplay. Uh, which is, again, why I focus so much on its swimming. It's best thing it can do is swim. So here I've got myself up on a rise, which is what it's good for. And there's an unsuspecting... Ah, oh, look, I did no damage, though. But I did hit a module. A little bit later here, I, I decided to get PT-76 crazy and go after this M60 that's still sitting down here. I decided if no one else was going to do it, I guess it would be me. It's pretty interesting to watch. Uh, I hit him right in the side here. Boop! No effect. Let's try that again. No effect. Oh, come on, don't let him get the front of you. Try to get to the side. Oh, that didn't work too well. Also, no damage. One more time. No effect. Aha! But my teammates got him, so while he was messing with me, so it kind of worked. But anyway, I, I looked later at the stats, and I was like, I, I didn't realize I had no effect. I didn't hear all that no effect. I went back, wait a minute, I did no damage? I shot that guy like four times. And so I was checking it after the game, going, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did no damage the whole game? See right there with my cursor? Sure enough, I didn't hear all that no effect thing while I was playing the game. I went back afterwards and looked at it. Alright, so this was my second or third game, maybe fourth game in the PT-76. But I want to show you what it can do, or what it's good for. It's basically good as a stationary TD when you get on flat ground. Uh, it's got a nice gun for that. And, uh, I had a, you know, you get in a good position and the enemy sits still long enough, you can actually do a lot of damage with this thing, especially for Tier 1. So it's, you know, the beached whale thing is... A little unfair to it. I, I, I kind of enjoy playing it when you get situations like this. Actually, the biggest problem I had was that little... I thought I was going to protect myself by hiding behind this little grid. Or that little uh, metal pole thing there. All it did was hurt me more than it hurt, <laughs> hurt the enemy, I think. But I figured it would stop some counter fire and protect me a little bit in case they ever lit me up. But, so, you know, you can watch here. I'm... Of course, they're also sitting still letting me shoot them over and over, but... In general, though, that's what the PT-76 can do here, that the M113 can't. He put lots of damage pretty accurately at long range uh, with a decent fast reload. But I'm not being lit. No one's coming after me. I have to basically be almost a stationary T, especially this thing is a light tank that's supposed to get this on-the-move bonuses and all that. But it, it moves like a beached whale, so on-the-move bonus for this one is, you know, pointless. So, the whole beach whale thing's a little unfair to it, but I did want to show what it can do, and this is a perfect situation for what it just excels at. Oh, I'm lit. Now, this guy's looking at me. They're looking at me. I can get one more shot in. Better run. Ah, ha, ha, you missed me. While I was playing, I found the pumpkin field. I don't know, I've driven, driven around here a bunch of times. I never saw the pumpkin field before, and I just thought it was really cute. And you can actually hear the smashing pumpkins. Here, listen. Get it? That was smashing pumpkins. Okay, I was having fun with this tank. That had nothing to do with helping my team almost the whole night. Mostly because I was looking for water the whole time. Uh, there's only one map with enough water that you can actually drown yourself. Unfortunately, it's this map I'm on currently, but this was when I was first playing the tank and it hadn't occurred to me that I was going to go try to drown myself or to try to see if I could swim. So again, I'm just showing some gameplay here. This one, you get on this bridge and it's just a wonderful firing position. And I was so busy playing around the pumpkin patch, by the time I got up here, these tanks were just waiting and willing for me to shoot them. It was amazing. So apparently, playing in the pumpkin patch can really help your team, after all. Target, 
I may make it a new map habit to tour the pumpkin patch prior to engaging the enemy. Maybe it'll help somehow. Okay, so now I've finally gotten to the stage where I'm going to go test whether this thing can actually swim. So the very first map I get on, I get, uh, I get this one. And there's two spots of water, and this is the little canal. I've been in the canal before, but I've never been in it this much with the PT-76. And, you know, any tank can do this, but I don't know what I was expecting. PT-76 to do it faster. But what happened was, so I, I was determined to figure out if this thing could actually swim, or would it drown like any other tank. I had some people in chat, because I was apologizing to my team for messing around and not really helping while I was doing this. And people said, oh no, there's no amphibious stuff. But I just wanted to, you know, do it for myself. I wasn't convinced. So, the second map I get, this is another game. It's the second game, because as you can see, I'm on the other side of the map. And there's no way to get in these rocks. So I typed to my teammates, you know, don't shoot me, I'm messing around down here. And you can see there's no way to actually get in the water down here, because this looks like deep water. I could try to swim, right? Well, so much for not shooting me. Here, I'm trying one more time. <laughs> Don't shoot me. <laughs> like that was going to work. Alright, so this is another game. So I'm just trying to, you know, I'm, I really want to go play other tanks. But I'm determined to see if this thing can swim. So this is now the third game that I've played. And uh, you can't get in the water down there. So I tried getting in the water down here. That doesn't work either. All, right, all I'm trying to do is get in the water here. I'm, I spent literally almost my entire evening trying to get this vehicle in water I could drink. Oh, look, apparently messing around is still not bad. So here's another map. Uh, water's all iced over. That didn't work. At all. There's no actual water. All right, finally, after a, a really, literally, at 15, 15 maps later, I finally got to the map where you could drown yourself. Because I know because I drowned myself here before. On both sides of this river, you can drown yourself, or at least you can drown. Here we go. Can I swim? Can I swim? Okay. That countdown doesn't look healthy. Doesn't look like it's going to allow me to swim. Nothing else extra happened there, but, you know, not satisfied. I spent 15 maps to get this. <laughs> I spent, I think, almost two hours to get to this stage. I tried several more times. Eventually, when the game was in the bag and... <laughs> We were about to win. Obviously, I didn't help. I did let it go down to zero, and sure enough, I drowned. So, very disappointing. The PT-76 cannot swim, or does perform apparently no better than any other tank in the game. Okay, this is nothing to do with the PT-76. I just thought the Scorpion was just really funny tucked on this bridge here. It's an awesome firing position. Well, thank you again for watching Let's Play Armored Warfare with Musashi. My name is Musashi. And I'm going to give you a little bonus historical PT-76 footage to finish this up. Thank you again. See ya. Из классификации. Но несмотря на это, легендарный плавающий танк ПТ-76 до сих пор несет службу в рядах вооруженных сил России.